Hey everyone, after doing my various challenges in Dream Drop Distance, which you guys should check out if you want more DDD content, I wanted to know if this game had any secrets or easter eggs. Well I did notice a few things and managed to find some stuff online, so let's start this list. The first easter egg that I found is that this mural in the Fountain Plaza is actually a reference to Cat from The World Ends With You. I know that the very existence of Neku and the gang is more than a reference to the game, and here is a version of the Japanese version of Cat from The World Ends With You. If you guys notice, the cat's eyes in the mural are different from the Japanese version. The Japanese version has one of its eyes look like the Star of David, and the other look like an upside down cross. The reason why we just got the basic stars and the Kingdom Hearts cat logo in the west is because of religious imagery and that it's bad and means less money for Square. Also, in the Fountain Plaza, there is a sign pointing to the right and it reads 4th Street. If you follow the direction that the sign is pointing, it'll lead you to the 4th District, not the 4th Street. Next up is Notre Dame. This is partly for me and my non-French speaking viewers. It turns out that La Cité de Cloche actually means the City of Bells. Crazy, right? I looked it up. That would explain why the world map has bells swinging when we are about to enter the world. I don't know why they didn't call it the City of Bells in English, or even simpler just call it Notre Dame, but that's where the name comes from. Another cool detail is that you can actually see the bridge from the cathedral, and when you go to the bridge, you can see the cathedral. Once you cross the bridge, you'll eventually end up in a graveyard. I spent a good deal of my time looking at the headstones in the graveyard. They are all incredibly hard to read since it's blurred and even if they were able to be somewhat read, I have no idea what I'm looking at. If the gravestones were written in English, I could infer what it means but since the gravestones are written in French and I don't know French, I can't really infer or translate anything. But that's not a problem if you have Google Translate, which I have. If you look around the graveyard, one of the headstones is able to be deciphered. French is not my first language and I barely know English so bear with me. It says O oh, Symphony a Pisan. I believe it says had a symphony in Pisa. I had to change Pisa to Pisa for Google Translate to translate symphony. If you can decipher what this message says from this very mysterious language, please leave a comment below. Anyways, the French language is confirmed to be spoken in the French city in France in Kingdom Hearts. You're welcome guys. Whilst I may not be good at the French language, I'm good at googling, and I found a spelling error in the game. I know that some of you don't like me pointing out spelling errors, so I guess you can ignore this next point. When you are playing as Sora and about to enter the Pleasure Circus, if you make your way to the right of the area, you'll see a poster with the word leisure written on it. I hate to be that guy, but that's not how you spell leisure. It's actually L-E-I-S-U-R-E. -E. At least I think it's being misspelled. Maybe they are doing some kind of marketing thing with leisure. You know how they make a plural of a word end with a Z or an X like kids or snacks. Maybe it's something like that. There are also a few creepy things in this level, such as the creepy clown from the moment you enter the world. I don't know why this world is so scary. Even when we enter the pleasure circus, we get this creepy clown mouth. I'm legitimately not sure if its eyes physically follow Sora, but I think they do. I'm not sure. And lastly, we have one of the creepiest things in DDD or any Kingdom Hearts game, this clown. I know that the eyes follow us in this instance, and I hope that they put more creepy stuff like this in future Kingdom Hearts games, as this is awesome. There's also this animation error where the tiger jumps through the hoop, but the wooden pole for the tiger actually passes through the metal hoops. Before I start talking about this point, I want you all to look at this. I actually discovered this in my Sora Dream Eater only video. Did you guys see it? The Mimi Bunny Dream Eaters are doing the come and fight me move. When I saw this I thought I was imagining stuff but once I reviewed my footage I really was impressed with this small level of detail. I then tried this with Sora using the magic lap pin and the Mimi Bunny Dream Eaters and they both do the same move. This meant that I now had to basically go through all of the intro cutscenes for all of the Dream Eaters in a boss fight and see if they did anything cool. Unfortunately, it's really just the Magic Lappin and Mimi Bunny that do anything sort of special. All the other Dream Eaters just sort of stand there or aren't aware of what's going on, but that's okay. Juggle Pup spins around. I have no idea what these penguins are doing, but it looks incredibly lame. I did find some Dream Eater animations that were sort of interesting, so it wasn't a total waste of time though. Ryu Dragon does some jumps like he's about to be amped to fight. And here's a twofer. The flower Dream Eater sort of hides itself and the bird appears to look for something more interesting instead of the boss. 
I also think that there is a Lucky Mickey emblem in the mouth of the salamander. Okay, you guys probably didn't care about those last two and I hope that I haven't made anyone click off the video yet because I think these last points are the coolest ones for the video as I've been saving the best for last. I'm going to fight young Zaynort and I want you all to pay attention to the colorful hourglasses in the background. Uh -oh. It turns out that for every health bar that Xehanort loses, an hourglass will just vanish from existence in the background. This is the only Kingdom Hearts boss that I know of that does this, and this is one of the coolest details about this game. Please comment below if you knew about this, as I was mind blown when I found this out. And then later in the fight, when we are supposed to damage his clock before he resets the fight, it's actually possible to now see all of the broken hourglasses in the background. It is a really cool detail because if we fail, the broken hourglasses will now be repaired. And for when you actually enter the second part of the battle where young Xehanort goes into his clock, there is a very obvious secret. If you look at the hour hand from when the fight starts until the end of the fight, 12 hours need to pass for the fight to be reset. As for when we fight the Armored Ventus Nightmare, there is another but more obvious secret. When you have to fight against him in the shot clock battle, don't fight him. I discovered this in my Riku Dream Eater only challenge, which you guys should check out. It's not actually a shot clock battle since Riku is currently using his Dream Eater's dual link to fight Ventus. I know it's a dual link since the Dream Eaters disappeared and their link gauge is falling with time. The cool thing about this fight is that it's actually possible to lose against Ventus without dying. If you manage to survive the clash battle, Ventus will do a very powerful move that will take away a lot of health that will most likely kill you. I'm sure the developers didn't want you to make it this far. If you do, the game sort of glitches and doesn't allow Riku to use any of his commands. We can't even heal. The game wants us to die. We can't even link with our Dream Eaters because the game will have sucked our link gauge dry from the Nightmare Clash battle. You can only attack Armored Ventus with regular Keyblade swings at this point in the fight, but you won't be able to kill him. The only way to win the battle is to go into the dual link again and beat him, as you must use your Dream Eaters to beat Dream Drop Distance. And I know what you guys are thinking, Charlie, what happens if you have no Dream Eaters to enter a Link style when you fight Armored Ventus? Will the game softlock and make it so that you can never beat him? Well that's a great question and thank you for asking. For those of you that don't know, it's actually possible to not have any party members in Dream Drop Distance as they can permanently die. I recommend just letting the Komori bats die as they have one of the lowest defenses of all the Dream Eaters. All you need to do is just go somewhere where there are a lot of enemies and let them die. It's actually a very sad process to let your Dream Eaters die. I legit felt terrible doing this. Anyways, I fought my way back to Armored Ventus and we can actually make it to the Armored Ventus fight without Dream Eaters. I was honestly expecting the game to force Dream Eaters back onto us. And now for the moment that we have all been waiting for. Riku will actually enter the same Link style command without any Dream Eaters and fight Armored Ventus like normal. The only difference is now we are missing the Dream Eaters Link Gauge so we won't be able to see it emptying. I think that there is a hidden Link Gauge slash timer during this animation. This will literally be the only time in the game that Riku can enter a Link style without any Dream Eaters. And that's all I got for you guys today. If you know any cool details about Dream Drop Distance, please leave a comment below. I know that not a lot of people like Dream Drop Distance, but I actually like this game and I wish there was a little bit more discussion about it. I do hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Mickey!